Hello my scrappy friends and welcome to my channel once again today. Uh, today's share is a stash video as I'm sure you saw. It is this 12 by 12 page and then this back to front, well not back to front, back and front of 6 by 12 journaling. So my journaling turned out way longer than I had originally intended. I thought I could fit it into the gap between the top and the bottom rows of photos. Um, I will read you my journaling in a minute. What I have got here though is a uh, pattern paper from the Paige Evans Bloom Street 12 by 12 paper pad. It's got the pink and the yellow and I really wanted to pull in the yellow that I used on the other page which I shall link the process video for um, where I've got my completed castle. Uh, it's the page that I did most recently for Cut to You using the uh, diamonds cut file. I'm going to use a couple of the squares. I don't use very many of them, but I do use a couple of the squares from the offcuts. Well, not the offcuts, the extra bits. Um, I'm going to use those as photo corners, which I thought was a fun way of using them. But in order to also tie in this page to that page, I'm going to do some holographic splatters. Here are my little photo corners. What you can see that I'm doing here is these three photos are kind of the main featurey kind of photos that I'm going to be using. Uh, I've mounted the one of the completed castle on white cardstock and then the one with Mickey and Minnie on white cardstock and then the one of me with the castle when it was completed uh, on a couple of scraps of pattern paper. I am using the Chamel Sparkle City collection again using some offcuts of chipboard to pop this up and I'm going, like I said, I'm going to add some splatters to my background here. I'm going to use the Mink Mist. Now, I learned some lessons that I'm going to share so you don't make the same mistakes that I did. Um, I think that the better way to get seemingly random splatters on a background would not necessarily be with the mist, maybe more so with the paste. Um, you can see I'm just splattering this on. Um, quick tip while I'm doing that. Make sure you clean up your area pretty quickly. This stuff is uh, quite sticky and it stays sticky for a little while. Um, what I've done is I've sprinkled all over that background, popped that aside to dry, left it overnight, and I was like, what am I going to do in the meantime? So I started working on this journaling piece. Um, so I'm just going to add some layers here. The things that I learnt when I minked my splatters. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, it took me a little while to be aware. Um, what actually happens when you put things through the mink is the heat from the mink uh, basically melts the, in this case, uh, mist that I used and rolls it through and in do, doing so, it if there's a, a blobbier <laughs> splatter, for lack of a better way to describe it, then it kind of spreads the splatter out. You will see that in the final photos. I kind of went, you know what, I'm not going to stress about this too much. Uh, I did run it through a couple of times. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is it does, like I said, it does melt the medium, the, the spray. I haven't used the texture paste yet, so I don't know. Uh, but it does melt the medium. If you do not have foil over where the spray is, then whatever is above the spray when it goes through the mink, it's going to stick to. So I do, do have a couple of tears on my background paper that is all covered by photos. So I kind of went, I'm not going to stress about this. Um, but note, please learn from my mistake. You don't want to put things, you don't want to put this through the mink without foil over where that mist is because it will stick. I had thought that I had ruined my carrier sheet. Luckily, I hadn't. Um, I was able to get the um, the dried mist off, but whatever is not covered by the foil will stick. So that uh, mist will melt again <laughs> and stick things together. I warned you. Please learn from my mistake. So what I'm doing here, um, these are all from Sparkle City as well. I'm showing you my journaling. Like I said, it turned out to be way more than I had thought it was going to be. I'm just going to grab it out. Um, I saved for over 12 months for this particular 
uh, Lego set. So this is why there's quite a story. And you can see with all the photos um, that it was quite a um, process. I'm going to let you watch this. It's pretty straightforward what I'm doing. If you do have any questions because I'm reading my journaling, please make sure you leave them below. Uh, but my journaling reads... Um, after chatting with the boys about them buying me more Lego, we agreed that they would instead give me cash for the big Disney castle, as that was the only one I didn't have and desperately wanted. Uh, Tinkerbell, so there's a Tinkerbell in this set, um, and she's apparently quite rare. So, I saved for close to 12 months, and when it was finally time to look at buying it, Lego Australia was out of stock. I couldn't believe it. Alan kept his eye on buy and sell Lego pages and managed to find one secondhand that happened to be local. The timing worked in such a way that he picked it up in time for the boys to surprise, and I've got surprise in inverted comp, like in little 66s and 99s, because I knew all about it. Me with it for my birthday, they were so excited. As it was pre-loved, only built once, all of the pieces were out of their original bags. After lots of consideration, I decided the best way to sort it, to build it, was by colour. With over 4,000 Lego pieces, this in itself was a massive and time-consuming job. Sorting started at the dining table in August, but by early September, we had moved it to my craft room um, on the table in the centre of the room. Flip it over. Um, my number one helper and master builder, Hunter Jet, was, of course, always eager to help and eager to help with any of the tasks, including the not-so-fun sorting. After many hours, lots of stops, starts and stops and of course plenty of help plenty of help from hunter jet construction was finally completed on the 9th of february 2020 hunter jet just couldn't process how it took so long and why it didn't consume my every thought bless him funny story though it was too big um so and i've got the dimensions here 74 centimeters high by 48 centimeters wide and 31 centimeters deep to fit where i had originally intended to go so it sat on the small desk in the middle of my craft room where kids got to play with it occasionally until the time came that we needed the desk for something else. Thank you COVID-19 for making me need to work from home. In the process of setting that up I needed a small desk to work from home at away from noise and distractions. My Disney castle now sits on its very own shelf in my craft room right above my silhouette cameo and one of the first things you see when you enter my home. So that is the uh, journaling. I did, like I said, I wanted to tell this whole story because it it really was uh, quite a journey to to find this castle, to own this castle, to sort this castle, and I really love it. I can see it uh, in my craft room from where I'm sitting, um, and it just makes me happy. And Tinkerbell is front and center on the bottom of the stairs. Um, all you've all all I've been doing is sticking. I've been kind of trying to match the top to the bottom i wrote my journaling out before i embellished at the bottom of that second page i wasn't sure exactly how much room i was going to have left so i didn't want to run out of uh journaling space because i knew i could fill any empty space with some embellishing all right so what i've done off camera you can see uh in the middle there uh a exactly where the one of my photos is going to go over you can see the really long splat <laughs> that was where some of the mist melted and i got a really long elongated holographic splatter <laughs> covered can't tell all good uh, lesson learned so what i have done is i've gone and i've picked uh, a bunch of different labels all in different colors um because why not uh, and I've stamped the date using grey ink on each of the labels to correspond with when the photo was taken. My journaling is dated May 2020 uh, because that's when I've done the journaling and all of these pages came together. I was really impressed actually that once I got one done, the other two just kind of fell together, which was awesome. Uh, I'm just sticking these down. Uh, that one down the bottom obviously has an extra, um, a bigger um, label. Sorry, I just went completely blank then. Uh, and I'm going to add a tiny bit of journaling onto that. I'm going to add my title here. Again, I'm using the Chamel Sparkle City Collection. Uh, both lots of thickers. And then the little alphas are from the sticker book. So my full title reads, The Greatest Ever Lego Build. No, 
the greatest Lego build ever. Um, from the chipboard, I pulled off this coffee cup. There were plenty and plenty and plenty of coffees drunk in this process. Um, I did spend many a late night in my craft room building, sorting. Um, yes, I have pulled in. I wanted a little bit more yellow, so I've used the uh, puffy stickers here. Sparkle. I was like, maybe do I? Don't I? Uh, because of where that photo has been taken and all that stuff is in the background, I found it really hard. Um, I didn't want to take too, I didn't want to add too much to that photo so that you lost the castle. Mm, just going through the stickers and all the bits and pieces here. I really wanted to get some birds on here. These ones are too big. I've put a little balloon, a little greeny, aquary kind of colour balloon dog on that label down the bottom because he was just cute. Um, a couple of labels here. I honestly cannot remember what they say. One I think says love it and another says so magical or something to that effect. I'm going to move them from there. Sorry for the head shots. And peel those up and move them down to the bottom here. Yeah that blue one says so magical. And the other one, I think, says love it. Um, I love these rub-ons. They're currently still working really well, so I, want, I wanted to use more than what I did, but I got a couple on. Um, you've got this. At times, I was like, what have I got myself into? That was mostly during the sorting process. Um, over 4,000 Lego pieces that... I didn't have to sort, but I wasn't sure how else I was going to be able to find each piece um, for each step as I got to it. So that's what made sense to me. Um, have fun. Uh, that was kind of something that I had to remind myself often of often because I would spend many, many hours looking down into <laughs> the tubs and boxes I had set up. It would hurt my neck. Um, but yeah, like the journalist says, my youngest hunter, he just could not process how it did not consume my every waking hour until it was done. Uh, obviously, at seven years old, he has very different life priorities than his mother. But that's okay. He was, like I said, more than eager to help at any given opportunity, even the really not fun job of sorting. He was like, yes, I'll help. Yes, I get to touch Lego. I'm all over it, Mum. Very cute. So I found these little birds from the sticker booklet E. I'm going to add one to the top left and one to the bottom right. Just using some double-sided tape to pop that up a little bit. And for this one as well, there is a little bit of dimension on that photo, I think. I can't remember. Maybe there isn't. I can't remember. <laughs> what am I doing? I really love having that camera hanging there on that castle. I really, I don't know what it is, but I really, really love it. I'm so glad I got it on. We saw me trying to get that onto the journaling um, quite a few times, actually. But it made it onto this page and I love it. Um, just to tie everything in a bit, I'm gonna use some more of these holographic stars. So I've got some of these on the first page I did, um, which I will, like I said, I'll link um, probably up in the top for you. Uh, and I've also used some of the titles, one of the titles on the other page with the completed castle in its home. Um, and so then I've popped some on here. I have then gone back through and added in some enamel dots that match the same colours on the journaling. And what I've got coming up is kind of how it's going to look in my album. Um, I can't fit it all into the screen, how I've got my camera set up. So obviously the left page, this is going to be in the middle in the 6 by 12 page protector, and then the right. And I really like, um, I'm so happy with that. So, so happy with that. Um, here are all the photos. I've got all the stills of uh, the 12 by 12, and then a few stills of the 6 by 12s. This was really fun to Build. I'm really glad that I had a bit of a play with my cap, no, not my cameo, uh, my mink. Um, and yeah, please learn from my mistakes so you don't waste your time or your paper or your foil. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure you leave them below. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm really excited to put this into my album. Um, 
yeah, this yeah something different and fun. And who doesn't love Lego? There's probably lots of people who don't love Lego, but not here in this house. Um, as always, thank you ever so much for stopping by. I hope wherever you are, you are staying warm and dry. We have gone from summer to winter. There has not been any in between. It has been absolutely crazy. Uh, so say, stay safe and warm. Or if you're in the US or somewhere where it is summer, oh my gosh, please catch some extra sun rays for me. Have a fantastic scrappy day and I will be back again soon with another chair. As always, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you soon.